Good morning and welcome to the Greenwood Street Early Morning Devotional. If you're just new to this, you're more than welcome. If you're a regular, we hope and trust that it'll be an encouragement to you what the Lord has to say to us all this morning. So let's just begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just give you thanks for the night that has passed into eternity. We praise you, Lord, for the day that lies before us, a day of maybe plans, preparations, maybe of blessings, maybe of disappointments, Lord. But the great thing is this day is in your hands. We really do wish it there. We thank you, Lord, for all that has been given to us, all the blessings we have enjoyed. And as we look forward to this new day, Lord, we just ask that we may go into this day in faith in Christ, believing that all things really do work together for good to those that love the Lord. As we turn to your word shortly, we just ask that you speak to each of us, me first, and then those who are listening second. For I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our reading this morning is found from Joshua chapter 23. The words of Joshua as he's saying farewell to the people of Israel. After a long time had passed and the Lord had given Israel rest from all their enemies around them, Joshua, by then old and well advanced in years, summoned all Israel, their elders, leaders, judges and officials, and said to them, I'm old and well advanced in years. You yourselves have seen everything the Lord your God has done to all these nations for your sake. It was the Lord your God who fought for you. Remember how Allah allotted us an inheritance for your tribes, all the land of the nations that remain, the nations I conquered between the Jordan and the Great Sea in the West. The Lord your God himself will drive them out of your way. He'll push them out before you and you will take possession of their land as the Lord your God promised you. We now come to Joshua at 110 years old. Joshua has come to the end of his journey. His journey that was started with the time of Moses. When Moses then left and didn't even get into the land of promise because of sin, Joshua took over. And God said to Joshua at that very beginning, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And for these last number of years, as he crossed the Jordan with the children of Israel, as they went and saw the walls of Jericho fall down, as the people went against Ai and failed miserably because of sin, as they went back and won a great victory there, as they conquered the land bit by bit, after tribe by tribe, defeated the enemy time after time after time, they now had practically all this land, as God promised, was theirs. And now this man, Joshua, is coming to the end of life. But he doesn't want to leave these people on their own. So as it's reminded there, he calls together the elders, the leaders, the judges and all the officials, all those in authority within Israel. He calls them all together. And this is his parting words to them. You see, Joshua has known the presence of the Lord. Joshua has known the Lord personally, as Moses did. Because God's promise was, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And Joshua knew that. And now he's addressing these people. And it's very interesting because after I finish, you lift your Bible down and turn to Joshua chapter 23. Read the whole chapter. We haven't read it this morning. And in that chapter you find in 12 different places, Joshua reminds the people of the Lord your God. The Lord your God, time after time after time. And in many ways he remembers them, the promises, the promises kept. And he warns them of what happens when you don't keep what God has asked you to do. He begins with, you have seen all the Lord God has done for you, to all these nations for your sake. He reminds them that, you remember, God brought us through the Jordan. He opened that river. We cast through. He brought us into this land, and you've seen all that He has done. You've seen the nations that have been conquered. You've seen the good land that God has given you. He has watched over you all these years. So God has done all these things for you. The Lord your God has done it for you. He then remembers them that who was it fought for you? At Ai. Who was it fought for you at Jordan? Who was it fought for you against the nations? 
the Lord your God fought for you. He then reminds them that who was it drove these nations out before you? The Lord your God promised, I will drive these nations out. Did he keep his promise? Yes, he did. He drove the nations out before you. And you see, all the promises that God has given you is kept. The Lord your God made promises and he has kept those promises. You have known his blessing upon you. Hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. Joshua knows he's leaving. He was there as maybe the one who held the rudder, kept him on a straight path. He's leaving. So he now he says to him, Hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. Joshua knows there are all types of problems round about them. There are people worshipping idols, all types of things. And he is wants the people to remember it's the Lord your God who has done this for you. You remain faithful to him. And because the Lord your God fights for you, you've had the victories, not because of the size of the children of Israel, not because of your army, not because of your capabilities, but because the Lord your God has fought for you every time. But be careful. Love the Lord your God. Never take him for granted. Love him as you should love him. He is the Lord your God. And if you wonder why you should love him, look at all he's done for you. Look at what he's doing for you. And you love him. This is important for Joshua to tell these people because he knows how fickle they are. They can very easily go after other things. But he's reminding them, love the Lord your God. And then he goes on to say, don't marry with any of these heathens round about you. Do not intermarry with any other round about you. Or the Lord your God will no longer drive them out. What a warning. The victories will cease if you intermarry. God wants you to remain pure, as his people, not to marry. So the warning comes from Joshua. If you intermarry with these pagans round about, God will cease to be with you. What a dreadful thought. And yet, is it not a great warning to us all to be faithful to the God of the Bible, not to the things of the world, enticing as they are, but only to the God of the Bible. You will perish from the great land which the Lord your God has given you if you intermarry and follow all our idols. You will lose what God has given you. You will lose this land that God promised to Abraham and has now given you. If you do not do what the Lord tells you, you will lose it. There's a warning for them. Not one of the good promises which the Lord your God gave you has failed. Eh? There's an assurance. Not one of God's promises has failed. Man's promises fail. The world's promises fail. Not God's. Joshua can say with great authority and and with a certainty, not one of the promises God made me for you has failed. And just as every other good promise of the Lord has come true, so will those that are still have to be fulfilled. He will finish the work he has started because he promised to. He promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. And there comes this great promise from God and it's scary. If you violate the covenant of the Lord your God, the Lord's anger will be against you. The anger of the Lord your God will be turned against you and not against the heathen if you do not keep to what he has asked you to do. I know thousands of years later it's still true. We say we stand on the promises of God. We repeat many things that they say our faith in God. We sing hymns that say, Jesus, I will trust you. And yet, are we as faithful as we should be? Do we always see God and love him with all our heart? Do we do what he would have us do, not what we would do? Do we remain faithful in our life and in our work and our witness for Christ? Joshua warned the people thousands of years ago, and you know the results when you read the rest of the Old Testament. 
they failed miserably. It's a warning to the church today. We still have the same rules and still things we should go by in life. We must stick to them. We must follow God his way. Not our way, not the world's way, but God's way. If we follow God's way the way we should, then God will bless us. and God will continue to build. God will continue to pour out blessings that are without number. As we face this new day, let's face it in faith and love and doing our best to live it God's way. And God will bless. He has never broken a promise yet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we get encouraged, we get blessed. Oh, we get uplifted when we turn to your word. Oh, it's thousands of years since Joshua told these words to the children of Israel. Yet, Lord, there's true today as they've ever been. If we obey and follow the Lord as he would have us follow him, if we are faithful to his promises, if we are faithful in what we do and how we do it, if we do not change God's way by marrying others who do not believe it, if we do not have a look round and say, well, those other things aren't as bad as given. No, Lord, there's your way and no way. There's only one way to get to heaven. There's only one way to live life, and that's God's way. So help we who name your name to be as faithful to you as you are to us. And for those this morning who are listening who still don't know you, Lord, you promised if you ask, you'll receive. So Lord, we pray for any out there this morning who just don't know you. If they ask, the Lord Jesus will come in, will sup with them, and they will know his presence and his forgiving power. Lord, help us all to face this day, trusting in the promises of God and believing as Joshua did, the Lord your God will bring blessings. For it's in his name we ask it. Amen.